Welcome back to The The Mentors. Mentors. This is Vadim. And Sergey. And you're listening to our weekly segment called The 5-Minute Pick-Me-Up, where we tell you stories to motivate you for the week to come. And this week, I'm going to tell you about an experience I recently had in church. An agnostic atheist journey to church. Right. Uh, If you... Well, actually, y'all probably don't know. We don't talk about this type of stuff a lot, but... Sergey and I are not very religious people, and by not very, I mean not at all. Uh, we grew up in a secular household, partly because in communist Belarus, you're not allowed to practice religion. And so, and also partly because our father was Jewish and our mother was Christian, and they clearly both didn't really care that much about religion. And any family members that did practice religion before the 1940s or uh, before the area where it was essentially suppressed out of you you kind of got used to not practicing it and not even talking about it. And so we grew up pretty secular and we never go to church. We never go to synagogue. I mean, we've obviously been in places of worship before, but never really thought about going to mass. That said, a very good friend of mine does go to church. And for the past year or so, he's been trying to get me to go to Sunday mass with him. And I was kind of hesitated because I don't really see myself going to Mass, but he promised me that this is one of those churches, it's called the Hillsong Church in New York, where they welcome anybody, you don't have to be religious, and to him, it's always just more of a motivational experience. So last weekend, I decided to say, eh, the hell with it. I'm going to give it a shot. Ooh, the hell with it. (laughs) No no pun intended. (laughs) Yeah, actually, Vinny was trying to get me to go, and I bowed out. To let him figure out what the experience was going to be like. It was a Sunday afternoon. I had nothing else to do. And I figured there must be some value to this. Of course, I understand the value of the community getting together uh, once a week and kind of getting yourself set up for the week. I I totally got the value of it. And so I decided, okay, I'm just going to go today and see what this is all about. To set the stage for you, this was at the Hammerstein Ballroom on 34th Street in Manhattan, which is a massive venue an old opera house where they have professional wrestling shows. They've had Jane's Addiction and Iron Maiden and massive concerts perform there as well. And so it's a really big venue. And when you first get in there, there's essentially a concert that's playing. That's part of the experience of this church is before the sermon starts, there are some people speaking and stuff, but there's a lot of people on stage dancing and a whole rock band playing Christian rock music. So right away, it's getting you invigorated. People are kind of dancing around and it's feeling good. And while, of course, I don't agree with everything that was said throughout the whole procession, I did learn a valuable story that came out through the sermon. And it is a very modern experience. And what I like about this particular experience is they weren't really trying to shove religion or a certain way of thinking down your throat. But they do try to give you motivational takeaways. That's part of the value of the experience. And the pastor told this one story that really stuck with me. You see, when he got married, he had never traveled before, but his wife loved traveling. And so they scheduled a trip to Morocco where they were involved with some kind of orphanage that they supported that they wanted to visit. And on that trip, they had a layover at London Heathrow's airport. Now, this gentleman had never traveled out of the country before. I don't think he really ever flew before either. And he did not know what a layover was. So they get to Heathrow on the way to Morocco. And he had never been at a big airport like this. And he said he was just really excited about everything he saw. There were incredible five-star restaurants there. There was a mall. Things that the typical traveler doesn't even pay attention to when they go through an airport. We don't get excited by it. But he had never experienced it before. And to him, this was a novel experience in and of itself. He was so excited about his stay at London Heathrow's airport that he actually completely forgot about their destination of the trip, which is the orphanage in Morocco. And the takeaway from this story for the people in the room was, and there were thousands of people in there, was that some of us are currently in our own personal layover, whether it's our careers our relationships. At some point, we got comfortable. We forgot about the destination that we're trying to go to, and we decided to get stuck in that personal layover. And Vadim actually came home that day. He gave me a call. He told me this story, and I thought, well, that's really cool. First of all, that it proves yet again that if you're open-minded and let yourself have certain experiences, even if they don't necessarily 
align exactly with what you normally do or believe that you can actually learn something and take something away. So you went to this experience, you got that. But I think you also mentioned that there was a specific significance for you from this story. And and there's a reason why we wanted to tell you guys about it today, because we think there's a lesson here. So as you all know, the longtime listeners, and if you're new, now you'll find out. Sergey and I love to experiment on different business ideas. Uh, We're kind of like forever entrepreneurs. We're always going to get excited about something new and will want to work towards it. But sometimes the problem with that is you're not focused. You are spread too thin. You're going in different directions. For me personally, for example, I've been freelancing for a while, so I take on a bunch of different side gigs. And because of that, the ultimate goal of, let's say, starting a new business suffers. And so recently, I actually started working on this new business idea that I'm testing that I won't divulge right now, but hopefully we will tell you about it in the next few months. But I started working on this idea. And I got back from the trip in Spain. And with this new year, I decided I'm going to set aside three months to try this idea out. And I want to only work on this concept. I'm fortunate enough where I can allow myself to do that. But this past week, I got a phone call. I got a phone call from somebody that I used to work with in the past with an offer to take on a part-time job that pays a pretty high hourly rate. And of course, that sounded really attractive to me because it's comfortable. It's work that I know how to do. But as I thought more and more about it, I realized it's not work that's going to get me closer to the goal of what I'm currently trying to accomplish. And this is where the metaphor of the golden handcuffs come into play. A lot of people, especially if you go through college, you get a higher level degree, you separate yourself away from folks, you fight to get to a great career, and eventually you land in a place where you're making a, let's say, a six-figure salary, and you're comfortable, but you maybe aren't really excited about what you do day to day, and maybe you're not getting towards your ultimate goal of whatever it is you were trying to accomplish. But because you're making so much money, and because you know what you're doing, you don't want to quit that job. The unknown is scarier. The potential to make zero money when you have a comfortable six-figure salary, you create a life for yourself that you enjoy, like going out to eat going out with friends, living in a nice posh apartment, traveling, whatever it is, it's difficult to give up. And so this concept of golden handcuffs, literally being handcuffed to the current state of where you are, is real. And I believe that in some ways, sometimes I create that for myself. So this week when I got the call, I decided I'm going to try to break away from this concept of the golden handcuffs, at least for now, while I can, to try to pursue my ultimate goal. Now, to be clear, we understand that even talking about golden handcuffs, it's a, it's a luxury. And it's not always a bad thing. Sometimes you need to allow yourself to, let's say, work at a high paying job and not dedicate time to your passions because you're saving up. There's, you know, there's practical limitations. You can't jump into something full time of your own right now. But if you listen to yourself and you know that in your heart you do have to pursue that bigger goal, that personal project, whatever it is, at some point you may have to make a sacrifice and take that risk and say no to other things. And that's really where the difficulty is for most people. In the moment, we let ourselves say, no, this is what I need to do. This is comfortable, but it also is self-preservation. This is the safest route and I must take it for myself, for my family, etc. But if you're honest with yourself and you do the self-evaluation and you realize you're in that layover period that Vadim said, that's where we're saying where it's important to actually make some specific choices about where you spend your time. Another quick story that comes to mind is that of author Stephen Pressfield. I mentioned him a lot on this podcast. He's an author of a book that I recommend to everybody called The War of Art. Not The Art of War, but The War of Art and a sequel called Do the Work. Now, this gentleman, he wrote for decades, and on his About Us on StephenPressfield.com, you will see that he said, I wrote for 27 years before I got my first novel published, that novel being The Legend of Bagger Vance, that ended up being a best-selling novel and ended up being turned into a movie. But before that, he lived in a constant state of safety, golden handcuffs. He was a teacher. He apparently drove a tractor trailer. He worked in advertising for years because he did have the skill of being a good writer, so he wrote advertising copy. He even was a screenwriter in Hollywood. But he was in this constant state of comfort and not working on his novel, which is the passion that he had. And eventually, if you read The War of Art, 
something clicked in his 40s, I think maybe even in his fi- in his early 50s. Later on in his life, something clicked and he decided to essentially hide himself away in a cabin that was really, really low rent and just write for a year straight. And of course, that book ended up being a bestseller. So the takeaway from this episode is try to recognize when you are in your own personal layover. Whether it's your career or your relationship or whatever it is, try to Take stock of that. And when you do have opportunities that come your way that might distract you from reaching your ultimate goal, that might not get you closer towards what you're trying to accomplish, if you have the luxury to say no, or you want to create the discipline inside yourself to say no, it might be worth it. Because the worst thing that can happen is to be in a perpetual cycle of standing still when maybe just one decision can keep you moving forward. That's it for the five minute pick me up for this week. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with us and we're excited to see you again on Wednesday. Have an awesome week ahead.